Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. Today we'll be looking at the dot point, explain the relationship between the requirements of cells and the need for transport systems in multicellular organisms. So it's an explained dot point, so we need to look at cause and effect. And we've sort of been looking at how surface area to volume ratio, surface area of um, reactants, changes the way that uh, reactions can take place or increases the rate of diffusion or increases the rate of reaction. So what we're going to look at today is how each cell needs the requirements or how each cell needs particular things in order to be able to function properly and that in multicellular organisms, we need transport systems to be able to carry those nutrients or those requirements from where they are taken in to where they are needed. So before we do that, we're going to quickly look at the difference between uh, unicellular and multicellular organisms. So unicellular organisms are obviously organisms that are only made up of one cell. And because they're only made up of one cell, their surface area to volume ratio is quite high. So this adequate surface area to volume ratio allows a couple of things to take place. It allows the process of cellular respiration to rely on simple diffusion to provide the essential requirements such as oxygen, and as we know, glucose is also needed for cellular respiration. So those substances are able to move straight from the environment into the organism and then into the mitochondria for respiration to take place. Secondly, the removal of waste products such as carbon dioxide, urea and other metabolic wastes is extremely easy. So their surface area to volume ratio allows the opposite of substances moving in to allow the removal of waste products. So as we know, if carbon dioxide stays in the blood for too long, it can turn the blood acidic. So it happens the same with unicellular organisms. So it can turn the internal uh, environment of the unicellular organism acidic and therefore stop reactions from taking place efficiently. Okay, and lastly, the process of osmosis across the body's surface allows simple maintenance and su of sufficient water levels. Okay, so again, just like our little agar uh, cubes that we used, diffusion and osmosis takes place quite easily. Uh, in particular, again, with our unicellular organism, water can move in and out quite easily. So multicellular organisms, on the other hand, is a little bit different. The total surface area to volume ratio is smaller as multicellular organisms are larger. So this means that cells towards the centre of a multicellular organism are therefore further away from the surface and the delivery of substances from the outside environment are less effective. So we can't just have oxygen diffuse across our skin and enter the cells that are towards, say, our stomach, our internal organs. Okay, It just doesn't happen. Same with water and exactly the same with removal of waste. We can't just push them out through the surface of our skin we need some kind of transport system to take them from where they're made to where they can be removed. Diffusion and osmosis are very slow, passive processes. Remember, they only occur with a concentration gradient that do not provide these cells with adequate, adequate resources. Okay, so again, we can have diffusion across the surface of our skin of water. Sorry, osmosis, that's right. As osmosis across the surface of our skin but it's not going to be adequate enough to provide us with the water that we need to maintain all our cells with an adequate water level. So the greater nutrients and oxygen are required for larger organisms, such as complex animals, to provide sufficient energy. These organisms also produce more waste and hence have a greater need for transport. So transport systems are therefore present within large multicellular organisms. So if we look back at our uh, dot point that says explain why we need to have transport systems based on the need for the requirements to get to cells. This is pretty much it. Okay, so multicellular organisms are too large. They cannot have their substances move directly across the surface. Therefore, we need transport systems to carry the substances from where they enter the body to where they're needed and also transport wastes from where they're produced to where they're removed. So in animals, these transport systems include the respiratory system, the circulatory system, and the excretory system. So in the next video, we'll be comparing these three systems and having a look at their main components and their function. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.